Hello, Queen of Peace viewers. I am Christine Bacon, and I'm here today with Vicki Smith for the Healing Hour. She has the gift of healing. I am in for the wonderful Christine Watkins, who I love greatly. Um, and we are streaming this live, but don't worry if you are watching this after the fact, the healing that you are going to experience, God is not held by a clock. So if you're watching it, he is going to honor whatever healing he would have done had you been walking, watching live. Vicki, thanks so much for um, availing the gifts that God has given you to, to not only me, but to all of our viewers. God bless you. Today, you're going to be you. talking about the rosary in a way that most people don't understand, that it's actually got healing powers. Am I correct about that? Absolutely, 100%, because I've seen it over and over. Yes, thank you. So um, would it be okay if I just started out straight with a prayer? Because one of my favorite prayers is the unity prayer. It's, it blinds Satan. And then yes. uh, you're going to do the, the protection prayer, because why not double ourselves up? Amen. Would that be fair? All right. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, my adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. O oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all humanity. Yes. And I'm going to just add to this uh, protection prayer. That protection prayer is very powerful to blind and block Satan. Absolutely 100%. It's only an eight line prayer that anybody can put into action throughout the day. There's several priests I know who put it out throughout the day, multiple times a day. And one of the reasons I want to pray the second prayer is that before I knew about the unity prayer, I was taught interiorly and also exteriorly about the power of the precious blood for protection. And we're going to address that actually later in the Rosary Through the Passion. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every listener who's listening here, all of your intentions, your families, your finances, all relationships, everything under your care. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon the mantle of the Blessed Mother to surround and protect us, keeping a hedge of protection between us and the enemy and allowing us to feel her warm embrace. Oh, Jesus Christ, I call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come with your wisdom upon this time so that each and every soul knows that their heart is being heard by heaven. Come, O holy angels of war, to surround and protect us, keeping a hedge of protection between us, the enemy, 5,000 miles out in every direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak of spiritual soundproofing and his spiritual blindness upon the enemy, that he is not able to see, hear, relay, transmit, or convey anything spoken, written, or in any forms of communication in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ, were any demonic activity, the enemy tried to interfere with this broadcast, in any way, shape, or form, or for the healings that are going to occur, we just send those spirits immediately and directly by the name of Jesus to the foot of the cross, that they're rendered deaf, dumb, blind, mute, and impotent with no power of authority. In the name of Jesus Christ, no power of retaliation. In the name of Jesus Christ, bound to the foot of the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, we loosen the godly opposite upon each and every listener, their families, all of their intentions, and upon this broadcast, in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, with your wisdom. Come in the name of Jesus. We give you glory already, Lord Jesus, for the fruitfulness of this prayer. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
that prayer was absolutely necessary because if anybody was watching before we went live, we were having massive difficulties. And the unity prayer is so good at, um, at just blinding Satan. And so the prayer of protection. But I don't want to waste my time on that. Vicki, as we're going to be going through this and this healing, I think we want to start off with by asking listeners, any of you struggling with something right now, to, to gauge your pain level. On a one to 10, what is your pain level? Because as a scientist, I'm a social scientist, we measure things. And if there's no measurable difference, well, then how are you to know? So right now, if you're hurting any place, any uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, give your pain a number. Yes, and include the body part. You know, uh, last uh, time that we met, many people got on, they said, oh, let's say my leg was at a six, it's now at a zero, or it's at a two. And so I think it's really important that you all who are listening are able to see that Jesus, the divine physician, is truly with you now, truly hearing your intentions, and that you will experience the effect of his presence. Because when Jesus shows up in his presence, he shows up with his power to heal. And all you need to do is put that down and then rest in this teaching, soak in the teaching, soak in his presence. And I have seen over and over, there will be an effect, either immediate, progressive, or even creative. Uh, so just take that into account. God knows everything. <sighs> yes. And so while they're doing that, if it's okay with you, Christine, I'd like to share actually the fruit of what has been occurring as a result of these healing hours, as a result of people listening to the teachings in uh, the upper room, which is the ministry that we'll address later, of which I partake. So um, this is our one fourth of, week, right? Is this the fourth week? And you've already had many, many, many people from around oh, the world yes. tell you that they have had testimonies of healing. I know. So that's what we're going to do. And that part, it always excites me. So go ahead and just get it. It excites me we'll too, talk. because Jesus is calling card is healing and his presence. So one of the things uh, that someone wrote into me about was the fact that they asked us to pray for a healing of cancer in their loved one. So there was cancer as diagnostically taken that yes, there was cancer. We prayed, we intercessed. They actually went in for surgery. The surgeons went in and guess what? They found no cancer, not any whatsoever. So this is a fruit that I want all of your listeners to experience. Um, there's now don't just think that healing occurs only physically. There's emotional and spiritual, et cetera, et cetera things like this. Someone had said on the last recording, they showed up with anxiety and depression. And by the time we were finished, they were completely anxiety free they had they had peace hallelujah praise jesus another one is say um she said she uh, attended actually part of the extrapolation what we do here is through the upper room and i happen to have a, a prayer time that i'm going to apply here today this is a testimony of what i'm going to do here today and its effect i prayed the most precious blood from the passion of christ upon the listener and she said her ears were opened during that healing testimony, uh, during the healing prayer. And another one is a, a woman said her throat was completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing Jess. And then an, another soul uh, named Diane, she was applying what we're talking about doing here, the precious blood, the benefits of fasting. These are all through our various teachings that go on through the healing hour as you apply them. And she said there's been healing in her marriage, healing in her physical body. She was unable to eat. And now she's able to eat. And she was so surprised at the gift of how it poured out upon her as a result of receiving this prayer and putting it into action. I'm so grateful for all the people that are watching right now that it, it really, Vicki, it's a sign of how much they trust God because they're putting their prayers mm -hmm. out there and we have to speak it into reality. And one of them really touched my heart. It, it slid past, so I didn't get the name, but it's a mother who's praying, I believe, for her daughter's child 
to be born. It sounded like it was a grandchild. Again, forgive me because the chat went through too quickly. And I just recently had a niece suffer the loss of a child and um, it, it, that had wanted to be born. So I have, in, know in my heart, I will be praying especially for that mother and for that child that the amniotic fluid will go down and that that baby will be born and smiling, just come out of the womb smiling. And you guys will know it's a miracle from God. So just wanted to put my own personal prayer out there. But um, yeah, so those are just a few of the ones that you had. And we can't even go over all the healings that, that have come to you in messages, Vicki, right? What a big, but, good problem to have that we can't go over all of the healings. <laughs> I know. I'm glancing and I'm trying to look at all these prayers coming through. And then I saw some that already were healings and I'm just thinking, God, oh my God, oh my God. But I don't Amen. want to kill too much of the time because the Lord has given you this gift of healing. And so one of the things people are not aware of, so many people watching this probably pray the rosary, but I wanted you to talk specifically to our viewers about the healing powers of the rosary. So it's one of those, don't turn the channel. It's not going to be a boring rosary conversation. But what are we not knowing about, Vicki, that I think we need to be aware of in terms of the rosary and healing? Yes. So this is so powerful. The very first time that I prayed the way I'm going to pray for each and every one of you, whether you're listening now or in a recording, because like Christine alluded to, um, God is outside of time and space. There is no obstacle uh, for Jesus in time and space. So um, the very first time this is placed upon me, I prayed for a woman who was actually dying. Uh, she had C. diff and she had lost 40 pounds. And I was kind of her last resort. <laughs> but praise God, I actually showed up. And I'd never prayed in this way before. But I got an interior knowing of how to pray for her through the rosary. This is different than I typically uh, had prayed in the past. I plead the blood of Jesus before. I call upon the blessing of the uh, Blessed Mother. I call upon very many things and speak healing upon a soul. But the Lord was expanding my vocabulary of how he works. Supernaturally, not naturally. So like Christine said, you know, sometimes when we think of the rosary, we think, Ah, uh, this is repetition. This is just echoing things. I'm going to do it here. Today, we're not just doing it here naturally. We're elevating it. Like Jesus says in Isaiah 55, where he says, my ways are higher. One of his higher ways was through the passion of Christ. And so what, what was occurring there in the passion of Christ was this holy and precious blood poured out in the agony in the garden, the scourging at the pillar, the crown of thorns, the carrying of the cross, and through the nail wounds in the hands and the crucifixion. I'll be a bit more in depth in that in just a moment. But um, so as I prayed for this woman, I prayed in a new way. I was led to pray, uh, applying the precious blood poured out in the agony in the garden. And I'll do this in just a second when I pray for healing towards the end of the show. But it's important that you all are in the disposition to receive, opening the door wider for you to receive. That's what I'm doing here in this teaching, opening the door wider for you. Your position is to simply be a sponge, soak in presence, because he comes with his power to heal in presence. He's seeing all of your texting right now. So as I prayed this, I prayed through the agony in the garden, like I said, through the rest of the mysteries, applying the precious blood upon her in the name of Jesus. As I did so, and then I finished all of her C. diff experiences, losing weight, not being able to eat, and symptoms of C. diff completely went away and she was completely restored and healed through the power of this rosary. What am I doing? I'm giving you testimony of the power of what I'm about to pray in just a moment upon each and every concern that you have. That's the benefit of this. So that's the backstory on why I pray this way. And then to put it to the test, I prayed it over and over in this way. And I kept seeing people get healed through the precious blood. Remember, this is supernatural. The rosary is supernatural. It's supernatural in the way in which 
We go into depths in unifying ourselves with praying with Mary to Jesus. In this way, I have seen miracles galore. Too many to count. There has been uh, rosaries turning gold as a result of presence. There have been healings. I've placed them on people and they were healed. The rosary is much more than we think with our physical eyes, our mental thoughts, much higher. So can I ask you a question? Of course. So, so how is, so when you were talking about the passion, right? You were talking about the mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, the suffering in the garden, the flogging, the crown of thorns, carrying the cross and the crucifixion. So for the people listening, how do you specific, how is that different than when we pray the rosary using the sorrowful mysteries? Is it different or do we just acknowledge like, okay, I'm going to cover my dying sister, for instance, yeah. with, it's, yeah, so help uh, okay. us understand that. To answer that, it's, I'll give you a natural and supernatural. It's a yes and no and a yes, <laughs> because that's the mysterious life right? That's a supernatural life. Um, so we are expanding the vocabulary of the depth of the power lying within it. Some of our challenges, and it has been my challenge, I don't know about some of you when you pray the rosary, has been some of my own challenge not to know the depth of where it's taking me. We actually enter into the garden. So here's what I want you to know about that particular prayer that I prayed and what I'm praying for each person here. In the agony in the garden, where the Lord prayed for each and every one of us, name these people, Julie, Anna, Stella, Arlene, all these people, Tracy, every single person that we have, Eric, he had our names on his tongue. This was the agony. And in this agony, in the agony in the garden, this is where I was shown through the application of blood that poured out through his pores, he put to death sins and spirits that come against the emotions. Remember the emotional torment. And then, and then I would pray the whole rosary, the Our Father and the Ten Hail Marys. And that which takes us deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, because if I was to pray, uh, which I'll do later, I would be approaching in our emotions, there are memories, there's intellectual memories, there's trauma, etc. Okay, moving forward, in the scourging at the pillar, his flesh was torn, but he applied the precious blood for his children. All of the names we see here, Sandra, Jackie, John, Jean, Rosie, he had all of your names on his lips and he was doing it for you, Yasmina. And this is where he applied, where we can apply in the name of Jesus Christ, the precious blood upon sins and death is where he put the death, sins and spirits that come against the flesh. As I prayed this upon the C. deaf soul, uh, who had the C. deaf, um, spoke it upon her flesh, the application, it's as if I'm taking a cloth soaked with his precious blood, from this particular part of the passion and applying it onto someone's flesh. She was receiving healing layer by layer by layer by layer, symptom by symptom by symptom. Okay. And, and so I plead that upon the soul. The second, the third is where in the crown of thorns, our Lord poured out in his humility, his precious blood, through the crown of thorns. This is where he put the death sins and spirits coming against the intellect. The way in which I pray it is I plead the most holy and precious blood through the name of Jesus Christ upon the intellect of that soul, putting to death sins and spirits that come against them. So to answer your question, yes, we're not only going higher, we're also going deeper. So it's the same, but it's deeper. Sort of like, if you can liken this, Christine, I think you'll get this, and it, this is the way the Lord showed it to me. It's sort of like getting into a swimming pool, and you've gone to the same pool, but you're in the shallow end. And now you're swimming to the deep end. Same water, same pool, just going deeper. And then the fourth part of that mystery is the carrying of the cross. His precious blood was poured out upon the rocks. His precious blood is poured out on the cross itself, being tear tearing his flesh even more. Here is where he put to death sins and spirits that come against the will. He fell 
and got up, fell and got up, fell and got up, putting to death sins and spirits that come against the will. And then I plead this upon each person's will. In doing this, he is transforming us. He wants us to become the image and likeness as he is. This is how we were created. It gets polluted by our various life experiences. This is how he's purifying it. And then in the fifth, fifth part of the mystery, in the crucifixion, whew, through the nail wounds in the hands, the nail wounds in the feet, and the side wound, this is where he declared and decreed his work was finished. His redemption his teachings, his healings, and he gave us a commission, go and do what I do. Greater things than this you shall do. So this is the way in which we are doing this. You know, um, blessed Pope Pius the Ninth said, give me an army saying the rosary and I will conquer the world. Padre Pio himself said, it is a weapon against the enemy. So in this way, we have mystics and saints telling us there's true power in our intellect. We try to figure that, what is what power? How do I feel it? How do I touch it? We're trying to understand it through the finite mind, not the infinite wisdom coming from heaven. It's just, you know, I didn't start praying the rosary daily until maybe five years ago. And there has been this marked difference um, in my peace, I should say that, in my ability to handle pain, in my ways that I see the the most painful situations in my life. Uh, And and so in that alone is great healing. When you can look at a horrible situation and not be in despair, whereas four or five years ago you would have been, to exactly. Me, that's just the beginning of the power because of the word. Now, you have about. peace in the midst of conflict. Why do you have peace in the midst of conflict? It's because the, the rosary is also a weapon against the enemy. It reminds the enemy who's trying to grow around, prowling like a lion, seeing who can kill and destroy, stealing their peace. Well, in order for him to steal something like peace, we must have had it in the first place. So this is a weapon against the enemy, reminding the enemy with this rosary of great light on every single bead, it because it's counterintuitive, right? To think about there can be birth through a virgin and reminding Jesus, uh, reminding the enemy, there was birth through a virgin, not just a man, but a man, God. And it also, it reminds the enemy that he will have his crushed by this woman and it reminds the enemy that there is victory over sin so what you're seeing is a true weapon being raised up like padre pio said like saint uh pope pius the ninth said this is an army this is a weapon the reason you have peace is because through the rosary which is no longer just a natural thing that we're holding it is a supernatural weapon that is conquering. Remember in scripture, it says in John 1 and Colossians 1, it says, the darkness will not overcome the light. One of the ways in which this is happening is through the reminder of the walk through the life of Jesus. So I know that as we start doing some of these prayers, we're going to, Is it too soon to ask, because we haven't prayed for them specifically yet, if any of our viewers are having reductions in pain yet, or should we wait until you start praying this passionate blood over our Lord, over their wounds? So actually, let's think about prayer in a different way. It seems as if I didn't fold my hands and began to pray and target. But our Lord prayed and targeted as we gave witness and testimony of what can occur because the Lord has said in revelations by the word of testimony, which I just did, souls yes. receive healing. So, excuse me, if you'd like to now, listeners, please begin to start to put down if you have felt a shift 80% or more in your pain 
in whatever way you're feeling it, emotional, physical, spiritual, and began to see, let the other uh, viewers see that there is an effect, a fruit by the word of testimony. It's another way in which to think of prayer. Yes, prayer is folded hands. Prayer is also a word of testimony. And prayer through like Mother Teresa, prayer was her stroking the head of a baby. So what so, I'm hearing you saying is just the fact that you gave testimony of already other people that have been healed, and then you yes. discussed about the powerful of this healing instrument, this alone, this power in this testimony is healing Denise and, and Naomi and Abby and all those people watching right now who are asking for prayers. And that's why you're saying, see now, is there a decrease in your prayer? Has it gone from an eight to a seven to a six? Where is it? Um, and I think that is... That, that's it, right? I mean, it's just that easy. Is it is that e do. easy. It could be a mother cooking over a stove, just loving what she's cooking for her child. That is a prayer because where? what's the origin of prayer? Love. What was the passion of Christ? Love. What is the entire rosary? Love. Who is Mary? Love. Do you know the visionaries in Medjugorje, uh, one time when they were seeing the Blessed Mother, they said, why are you so beautiful? And she says, I am beautiful because I love. So it's very root. We would be situated into love. Someone is just putting down that their, their pain is down. Their pain is decreased, the Catholic Faith Channel. Their pain is decreased. That's powerful. There's mental pain that was at a four with Lara. She was at a four. Now she's a two. Do you see there's a shift? Now, do you know I just said another prayer? Because I'm giving testimony of what God is doing now with the souls who are listening in the chat. Their testimony of the presence, because when he shows up in presence, he shows up with his power to heal. And his power to heal is effective. Because I've been speaking the word in Hebrews 4. In Hebrews 4, it says the word of God is living and it is effective. Absolutely. May I ask you a question then? So Absolutely. what just came to my mind as you were talking is in the Bible, Jesus was healing. And then he gave the power to his apostles to heal. And then they went out two by two to heal. And then after Jesus died and rose and, uh, and ascended, then we hear about Peter would just walk down the street because of everybody else's testimony. They're like, just let his shadow hit me. And so it's this building. This is what I'm getting from you. This building of one person just says, Jesus healed me. All I did was ask for the shadow of one of his followers to cover me. And that healed me. Of course, we know we're talking about Jesus. So this is what I'm getting from this, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited really about what you just real. said. What you, what's so, so exciting about what you just said is this. I was trying to understand the whole shadow thing and how people could receive healing. And do you know the Lord gave me a very natural example of what that would look like? We, he, uh, Peter was hosting who he was experienced in presence and then carried it with him. The way the Lord showed it to me was he said, if you spray on a perfume and you go and you visit, if I embraced you, uh, Christine, you would leave still maybe smelling Chanel number no. five. Your perfume. Yes. And so that is the essence. You've been with me and now you smell a little bit about being with me. We are with him and the essence of who he is, we still carry with us. And so this, this is, like, is the you last. Want, like some, some crazy thing you're talking about right here. And, you know, because I know that people think that stuff, but this is what you're really saying is just speaking this is the perfume that passes from me to you because Christ passed it from him to me. And we're doing that and just keep passing the perfume of Christ, which is exactly. his healing power. Exactly. And in scripture, it says grace is fragrant. There you go. Grace is fragrant. And just as a last point before I began to pray over everyone, just, you know, Mary of Medjugorje, whether you believe or not believe, I'll just say what we know from, from Mary uh, of Medjugorje, Queen of Peace. She actually gave us um, five stones. These five stones are likened to Goliath and his five stones. Uh, when he was, David, when he was slinging the uh, five stones. These five stones are weapons that we can use to defeat the enemy. Do you know then one of those weapons is the rosary? So when Christine, you alluded to the fact that you felt peace, 
it is a supernatural peace that you're experiencing the natural body, but it comes from a supernatural source as a result of giving your time and your energy to the presence. You know, I'm seeing like Ina as we're giving a testimony to this presence. We're seeing that she feels tingles in her body. We're seeing that people are experiencing deep breaths and this is presence and what he's doing in each person. And I'm going to be praying over all of those things in the name of Jesus. I actually don't have to name them because Jesus himself is naming them. Hmm. Well, why don't we do that? Can we just start some um, prayers of healing for some of these beautiful men and women that are, are posting right now? Absolutely, 100%. And Christine, I know as a woman of faith, you know, one of the ways our Lord works is by giving us words of knowledge through the Holy Spirit. There may be areas, do you know, I prayed for a person who had 30 years of arthritis. I was led to approach the medicine for the arthritis, 30 years, through a prayer of forgiveness. So the word of knowledge came of forgiveness. I invited her to forgive. The 30 years of arthritis, completely gone. So it's very interesting, isn't it? How the ways in which the, the words don't seem like they would match arthritis is bone. Bone is this. It feels because I'm older. I have this experience. That's the natural mind. I'm inviting all the listeners to join into the supernatural mind. Because in Colossians 3, it says to keep your gaze on that which is above. That means all of you, I invite all of you right now, not to look at me or Christine, but to gaze interiorly or exteriorly on what is above because he is the one. Sort of like looking at the sun and the rays of the sun so that you can receive the heat, the light, the color, the warmth. And in fact, um, God the Father spoke to um, St. Catherine of Siena. He said, our natural mind, our natural senses, will be confounded by the supernatural, okay? In this way, he was actually speaking about the Eucharist, but he gives us lots of examples through some of the writings of Luisa Picaretta, Elizabeth Kindleman, and other spiritual writers, and including um, Padre Pio, uh, about how we can gaze at the sun without taking anything away from it, but it's still disseminating its heat, its light, its color. The switch, switch the word from S-U-N, sun in the sky, to he who is with us and resides within us, we are hosting him as a tabernacle of where he lives. So we're going to be moving away the clouds that have blocked what you think is access to him because he always has, you're, it's always available to you. Okay, because the Lord told me one time, he said, were I to stop thinking of you, even for a moment, you would cease to exist. So Sandra, Jean, Jan, Sandy, he is thinking of you in this moment. In this moment, he's the one who's giving your heartbeat. What's the root? Love. How do we explore love? Through the life of Jesus. What tool do we have? The weapon of the rosary and what he's done before. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That means what he did yesterday, he's doing today. It's a prophetic voice that we can find in Revelations. He's going to do it now. Now, as you situate yourself to receive this healing. May, may I add one thing, too, to build on what you just said? I saw that Absolutely. Sandra, for instance, posted that she is praying for her husband. And one of the things we always hear that husbands and wives become one flesh. And that is my area of expertise. And I've had many people on my podcast that talk about that. But what I'd like to say is literally prayers for yourself are prayers for your husband, prayers for your husband are prayers for yourself. It is a supernatural thing that we just can't comprehend with our mind. But when you marry your spouse's, your soul's connected. Father Robert Altier talked about that in his book on marriage, uh, which is escaping my mind at this point. But literally one of the things I say is when your spouse is ailing, when your spouse is in the far country of infidelity, when your spouse is just not living the life, they're struggling with an addiction, your prayers as their spouse literally 
is healing both of you because you are the same flesh. And so it's this amazing supernatural thing that God gives us. So continue your prayers knowing that God honors your prayers more because you're, they're coming from you for you, which is, you know, i.e. your spouse. I, I think sometimes the mind can't even handle that, but you pray for him or her they are feeling those prayers whether you know it or not whether you see signs of it or not and they are being changed because they are your flesh amen and you know to amp that up i have been uh, mentoring a soul and she was having a challenge in her marriage and i began to teach on my channel and you can see that later uh christian will put it up he's the man behind the scenes um she applied fasting. I taught how Our Lady Medjugorje talks to us about fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays. Everybody has thought it's so, so hard, as did I. I took an enormous, what I thought was enormous, <laughs> challenge during the last, uh, the Holy Week. And I fasted only on bread and water. I saw a breakthrough in my marriage, which I was surprised about. And then the soul that I was, it, as I did that short video on uh, how I fast, it's just a way. I don't know the perfect way, my lady, my friends, but I, I shared what I do. This soul just wrote back. She says, I can't believe it. There is healing in my marriage. You want a child to come back into the church, as someone to, a husband to come back in the church, a, a wife to come back in the church, amp up that prayer through a fast. I do bread and water throughout the day and there's ways to do it. I won't spend time teaching on that right now, but it's out there. Okay. So fasting is so, so powerful. You're right, Cecilia. So, um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and go into prayer because I, I want to make sure that all of you are in the position. Now I spoke about testimonies that have already occurred. That should help put you in the disposition. I spoke about the power of the rosary through the passion of Christ because of the precious blood being poured out for each of you. That's helping you putting you in this position. Again, open the door wider and wider and wider. I talked to you about saints and popes who talked about the power of the rosary as a weapon against the enemy. Like Christine was saying, she felt peace. I believe it was a supernatural peace, not a natural one, which is surprising to all of us because we frequently think with a natural mind. And I also spoke about um, that Our Lady asked us as part of the five stones to pray this. So now you have, you're in a great disposition now to receive healing. What do you need to do right now? Just be the sponge. I'm going to pray for you right now right after that prayer, begin to pop in. Even if it comes back up on YouTube, pop in what you receive. That testimony opens the door even wider for more healing because I'm telling you about Jesus. Jesus is fragrant. It's grace is fragrant. Like I gave the example of the perfume. <sighs> Ready? Get yourself whatever that looks like for you. Sitting, standing, hands open, hands closed, eyes open, eyes closed. Doesn't matter to me. It just matters. You're gazing on Jesus. Let us make a powerful, reverent sign of the cross. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I give you thanksgiving for the passion of Christ, the passion of your Son, the passion of the triune, the passion of what he experienced for each and every one of us. The Lord is targeting everything that torments you mentally, physically, spiritually, and that comes against your will through this passion. In the name of Jesus Christ, each time I say the name Jesus, a slight reverential nod. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the agony in the garden, Lord Jesus, as you prayed for each and every one of us with all of our names upon your tongue, you prayed so fervently and battled so fervently for each and every one of us that blood was poured out through your pores. May this holy and precious blood that put to death sins and spirits that come against the emotions be poured out upon each and every listener, no matter when they listen, as long as they hear the sound of my voice, the sound of this promise providence and protection coming over you. I plead that holy and precious blood upon each and every one of you, putting to death sins and spirits that come against your emotions. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
I'm actually getting that I should pray at one Our Father and one Hail Mary for that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus, as you went through the scourging at the pillar, where you poured out your holy and precious blood, as your skin was torn through three different bludgeoning and sharp devices, you poured it out, speaking each of our names upon you, putting to death sins and spirits that come against the flesh. In the name of Jesus, I pour out your holy and precious blood by the name of Jesus, the authority of the name Jesus upon each and every soul's flesh, putting to death sins and spirits that come against their flesh. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Oh, sweet Jesus, as you went through the crown of thorns in all humility, pouring out your holy and precious blood through the mortal wounds coming to your eye, in humility, naming each and every one of us, you put to death sins and spirits that come against our intellect. O oh, holy and precious blood, be poured out upon each and every soul's intellect, that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the putting to death, your blood is putting to death sins and spirits that come against their intellect through confusion, chaos, dysfunction, and fear, memories, traumas, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus. Vicky, I, am hearing, I am hearing just that it keeps coming to me that there is someone here who needs to forgive her husband. Her husband is cheating on her and she wants to hate him. And the Lord is asking her just to simply be love be love. Let God yes. do what God needs to do. He will heal your marriage. He will heal you, but you have to learn how to love like Jesus first. And that means love even when in the Lord's prayer, they are unlovable. Forgive to the degree that you want to be forgiven. That is what's holding you back right now. God is allowing this to take place because you need to learn to forgive and love before he begins this process of reconciliation. And I'm believing that. In the name no, of Jesus, speaking, you know who I you pray are. in agreement with that, Christine. And remember, forgiveness is an act of will, not an emotion. Just step into the believing that and doing what love requires in the moment. And it could be setting a healthy boundary. It could be speaking. It could be not speaking. It could be all kinds of things. Where do you get that wisdom? From the Holy Spirit who knows everything. That's John 14, 26. Oh, Lord Jesus, through the carrying of the cross, where you fell three times and got up three times, this is where you put to death sins and spirits with holy and precious blood spilt upon the rocks, spilt upon the cross, and it continued to tear against and splitter against your flesh. You put to death sins and spirits that come against the will. I plead this most holy and precious blood 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the divine healer, the redeemer, the savior, the El Shaddai, the Adonai, upon each and every one of you, putting to death sins and spirits that come against your will. Remember, my friends, you're soaking like a sponge in this precious blood, this living waters. Just soak. You don't have to force anything. Just soak in his presence. And then our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. In the name of Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And through the crucifixion, O oh, sweet Jesus, as you abandoned yourself to the cross, you extended your arms and the legs to receive the nail wounds in the hands, the nail wounds in the feet and the side wound, not to mention the shoulder wound, which is considered the spiritual hospital. Saints have written about this. Place your marriage, place the cancer, place your children, place your spouses into the spiritual hospital of the right shoulder wound in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, this is where you declared and you decreed, it is finished. Let it be finished upon your listeners in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary. Amen. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now, the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. My friends, we just finished. Put your a shift in your pain level, 80% or better. Remember, it can be immediate, progressive, or creative. And Veronica was feeling that the Lord is calling her to consecrated life and she has no idea where to go. And I just feel the Lord saying, go to the next door that's open. Don't push it. Don't try to figure it out. He's opening the doors. He said, just walk. Don't try to ask too many questions. If he opens a door to the right, go to the right. If he opens a door to the left, if you ask someone, if someone invites you to dinner, go. If someone sees you at church and, and says they want to say something to you, just walk in the direction that the Lord's taken. He will call you. He's very, very pleased that you are hearing his call to consecrated life. And um, he loves it's cons consecrated women. So I'm excited to see the clarity that he gives you just keep going in through the open doors that he's given you. And they can pray that the open doors, Christine, through Isaiah 22, 22, where it says, Lord, you're the one who opens the doors that no one can close and closes the doors that no one can open. So pray that prayer in your situation. Thank you for Christine for letting me pray that powerful, powerful prayer in the name of Jesus. I don't know what we would do if you weren't honoring the gifts that the Lord gave you, Vicki, to, um, that Lord is healing through you, giving you that gift. So it's a lot of people that are fearful of using those gifts. Thank you for doing it, for not being afraid of what other people think. Your boldness, the world needs it. God needs it. So thank you for being yes, so. It's now my you have an upper room ministry, right? So I believe, and yes. I would just like to say we you don't do that for free. You do, but you need to keep on doing it. So um, the upper room ministries is something that I like to say for Vicki, if any of you is feeling that you have anything that you could contribute to keep her ministry going, uh, we have on the screen now various ways of you giving, how to mail it in, how to go in through PayPal. Um, also, you can use Zelle. But these, I know that this always kind of, for me, was like, you know, how do we, how do we trust? This is just a ministry that the Lord has given Vicki 
to go out and spread the gospel to the whole world through, in her case, the gift of healing. And if you feel that you have anything from $5, $500, $1,000 or more that you want to help her to continue doing what the Lord has called her to do, please prayerfully consider giving to the Upper Room Ministries. Yeah, thank you for that. So can you tell me just one more thing? Can you give us a little bit more idea what the Upper Room Ministries does? I know that you do the healing here, but yes. for clarity for our viewers. Yeah, and if you visit uh, my website, you'll see what I do. There's a mission statement there, and that's www.inonespirit.com. All the words are spelled out. What I do is I pray to equip and empower the body of Christ. That's all of you. Equip and empower. That means you're carrying a spiritual backpack, if you will, to go into every situation and empower you by the mighty name of Jesus Christ as I simultaneously pray for healing and breakthrough. Do you know, Christine, in this ministry, we've seen the paralytic healed. We have seen uh, blind eyes open. We have seen legs grow out to be the same length. Look, Mary Beth is saying her anxiety is reduced, feeling peaceful. Look at the effect of what has just occurred now through the fragrance of God's holy presence. That's what I would do. And that's where I would love to continue to equip others. Look, someone is feeling tears. That's a beautiful gift, a beautiful release. And so that's what I do. I pray for more healing and breakthrough, breakthrough, including marriages, relationships, jobs, finances, and all these things. I've seen the fruit, which uh, let me just say this last uh, seed that the Lord gave me one time. He said, in one seed carries a multitude of seeds. One seed carries a multitude of seeds. He said, orchards and acres are within one seed. So my friends, I planted a seed in you. You now have orchards and acres of spiritual growth ahead of you, growing and holiness in front of you, healing. Keep contending. In the name of Jesus. Continue means keep going after the healing in the name of Jesus until you're ter told to turn another way, like Christine was saying. Go left, go right. That's written in Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything he's done. I praise his holy name. The website again is www.inonespirit.com. In one spirit.com. And I, I do meet, by the way, twice a month, if possible, if I'm not traveling. So I meet live and you can join me live and put your intentions live and you can be equipped live. I go into greater extent on what I do. In here. one spirit dot com. All one word in one spirit. And then also just because I feel that the Lord is reminding me to tell you about tears. There has been research done on tears. You've had tears. I, I'm a runner. When you run and the wind blows in your face, tears come on. You can watch a movie that's so funny. You laugh. You Tears come out. Um, they have studied tears when someone is crying through depression or sadness or stress. And only those tears, they find that they emit cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. It is a gift God gave you to cry. And I believe that's why he put the Lord in the Bible. It said Jesus wept when he knew that Lazarus was in the tomb, even though he's about to raise him from the dead. The idea of your tears, please do not begrudge them. Welcome them because that is also the Lord's way of purging you from just the, the sadnesses and the darknesses and cleansing you and giving you just a, a, a peaceful physical body and your mind as well. Don't begrudge your tears. Welcome them. And if you want to explore, if you want to explore you. that in the dialogue by Saint Catherine of Siena, God the Father speaks specifically to tears and how they're counted and how they're efficacious. There's so much that we could learn. And, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> we just yeah, scratched the and, surface. <laughs> You just scratched the surface because the Lord has given you so many gifts. And I just want to thank you for coming on to Queen of Peace Media and sharing a little bit of this. I'm sure that there are souls and bodies and hearts that have been healed just in this time that you have let the Lord use you as a vessel, Vicki. And um, you, can you come back again next week and do it again? I uh, not next week, it. next month. We do this I once would, a month. I would absolutely okay. love it. And don't forget, the Lord sent his word forth upon each of you and it will not come back void until it's accomplishing the task which he sent it. Amen. Amen. Do you want to pray us out? Sure. Heavenly Father, I thank you. There you go.
Heavenly Father, thank you already for the fruitfulness of our time together. It is outside of time and space. You're continuing to plant seeds in these souls to bear fruit, and to become closer to you, closer to your mother, understand the Holy Family, understand the power of the rosary and understand the power of your precious blood that you poured out for us. Send more, Lord, more healing, more a conversion, more liberation upon specifically all the people who are here and hearing the sound of my voice, all of your children in the mighty name of God, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless Amen. you all. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you all of you for viewing. Um, we Please come back here next month and always and let the Lord um, help you find your way home. God bless. Amen.